Welcome to worship. Uh, we're so glad to have you with us today. It's already been a busy morning at our 830 service. Um, we celebrated the baptism of Joseph Dale McClellan. So baby Joseph um, had his baptism. Um, and so uh, there was all the family and friends there. And congratulations to the entire family. And then at both our 830 service as well as this service um, today, we're recognizing First Communion um, for six of our kids, for Carson, Brooks, Addie, Ava, Thea, and Zoe. So may God bless these children and their families as we recognize this important milestone as a part of the worship service today. We also want to share a wonderful update. It is with great joy that we get to share with you that our mid-year special appeal, which was to help renovate our showers, which are used by a lot of different people in need in our community, was very successful. We not only met our $20,000 goal, but exceeded it. So we give thanks to God for that. That's something to celebrate. It is not too late to um, still support that. Any extra gifts that go above and beyond the cost of the shower renovation will just help with other projects in those bathrooms. I'm like keeping my fingers crossed for maybe countertops or something like that. As you've been in there, you know they need a little love. And so we're so grateful um, that we get to continue this ministry of hospitality and for all the support. Hi. Hi. And we also have VBS uh, this week. Mm -hmm. Turn my mic on. Um, so we're still taking registrations up for VBS. We also have a coupon board in the back. Um, so there's still a few items that uh, need to be uh, donated for Vacation Bible School. And we also want to recognize Kristen Duvall for her work in uh, coordinating all that, doing all the graphics, the mailings, getting all the volunteers and registrations. So thank you, Kristen. 
And we have our Lutheran Retreats camps and conferences staff here, member here. <coughs> They'll be uh, running our VBS this week. And so if you are one of the youth or adult volunteers who signed up to help with VBS, and um, we do have our volunteer training and orientation this afternoon at 3 o'clock. You can meet here in the community center. And then after that, for our students who are part of our high school youth ministry, actually um, probably the middle school students can stay too. We're going to have Domino's because I guess that's the, that's the pizza, I guess. So we're going to have Domino's pizza. That was what was requested and some games and activities as a part. That will be our SALT youth group activity for this afternoon. And with uh, Vacation Bible School this week, uh, there are some changes to our schedule because they'll be using this room all week and uh, also a lot, every space on our campus. And so one of the things that's changing is our summer craft and quilting group will not meet this week, uh, so they're going to postpone until next week. And then, but our Seekers book group will still meet on Wednesday night <coughs> at 6, and so Carol Houston, who's here today, is the contact for that group. And our teenagers will be meeting at Olive Garden this week. Traditionally, this would be a, a potluck a month for them to have a potluck here in the community center. And so they've changed the schedule, and they're going to be meeting at Olive Garden at 1130 this Thursday. If you'd like to be part of that teenagers group um, and that lunch on Thursday, let us know on the blue slip. And then it's not too late. You can still sign up to be a part of our Christ Fair training class, which will be <coughs> next Saturday from 10 to 12. Pastor Karen Marone will be leading that. This is for people to be um, trained to help visit people in their homes and bring them communion. And we'll go over everything that's involved with that um, and share more about what that ministry looks like. And so if you're interested in being a part of that training, we just ask that you let us know on your blue connection card. If you're online, you can check the box there as well. You can also RSVP for that teenager's lunch here. And let us know, of course, that you're worshiping with us, filling out the front. And then on the back, there's room for prayer requests. So please let us know how we can be praying with and for you through our prayer ministry. And we do have altar flowers up here. Um, this is a, a, August is a, half my family is having birthdays in August. Our son, Manuel, um, will turn 22 on August 14th. And my wife has a birthday on August 15th. Um, and so these flowers <laughs> celebrate uh, their birthdays this month. And then we'd have one prayer quilt. This is for Micah Hetrick. This is Cheryl Hirsch's friend's son. Had both hips replaced this week. Prayers are successful treatment and complete healing. And this quilt will be out in the courtyard following the service. You can head out there, tie a knot, and quietly say a prayer for Micah following our service this morning. And make sure to read through our announcements pages as well as our um, Newsletter that came out this weekend for the month of August. We have some big things coming up, including our youth dinner, uh, the return of our youth dinner on August 17th. So read more about that as well. Um, and we'll continue now with our call to worship from Harmonix.
leads me with our confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, abounding in steadfast love toward us, healing the sick and raising the dead, showering us with every good gift. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. <coughs> Just and gracious God, we, we come, come to, to you, you for, for healing and life. life. Our sins hurt others and diminish us. We confess them to you. Our lives bear the scars of sin. We bring these also to you. Show us your mercy, O God. Bind our wounds. Forgive us our sins. And free us to love for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Apostle Paul assures us. When we are dead in our trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ, nailing the record of our sins to the cross. Jesus says to you, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace and tell everyone how much God has done for you. Amen. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, He is Exalted. So with you, let us pray. O oh God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us and this world in all its need with the life that comes only from you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll continue now with the reading of Scripture. first reading is from the book of Exodus, the 16th chapter. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out of the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them, whether they will follow my instructions or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew all around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. 
When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Word of God, word of life. Thanks. Thank you, Lori. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. <clears throat> then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him who he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it was written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. So our uh, high school New Orleans youth trip is still very much on my mind this week, so much so that I'm still having dreams nightly about our time together on that youth trip. Not nightmares. I haven't had any nightmares, not even during the trip. I know uh, many of you have uh, never been. How many of you have been on a youth gathering trip before? A few of you, several of you. Um, I, my first youth gathering trip was in 2006 to San Antonio. That was my first gathering was after I was called here. I didn't grow up in the Lutheran church, and the American Baptists don't have national youth gatherings. In the American Baptist churches, we had a uh, spring break mission trip, and then we had a week of summer camp in the mountains. And so I had no idea what to expect on our first youth gathering trip. And our youth this year had no idea what to expect either. And some of our youth really needed some intentional encouragement and support before leaving for this trip. It was, and it can be, a very overwhelming experience for our youth, especially those in this generation that were just children in 2020. They have missed out on so much in their young lives. And that became clear as we lived and traveled together over the m more than a week together. However, this time on the trip gave them opportunities to catch up and experience much of what they lost over the last several years. It also gave me a chance to catch up on what I've missed out on over the last several years as well. Seeing some of, my, of our colleagues and friends from across, across the country, seeing so many happy and enthusiastic youth wearing their gathering shirts and walking in large groups all over downtown New Orleans. And it was clear to me by the second day of the gathering that these 17,000 youth needed this for both their social lives and their faith lives. On our last day, as we gathered for worship and heard the message shared by our presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton, that our youth and our church needed this time. It was needed time was 
with bread and water for our journey. Our gospel reading today is a reminder that that I need this time of worship and meal each and every week. It reminds me that the crowds then are not much different than the crowds now. Crowds wanting more, still thirsty, still hungry. St. Augustine wrote that our souls are restless until they find their rest in God. It is a powerful observation. We are a hungry and thirsty people. Whether we are adults, youth, or children, we hunger. We hunger to be seen. Hunger to be known, to matter, to have meaning and purpose. We are thirsty for recognition and affirmation that we are here. John's gospel this morning tells us that they came looking for Jesus again. Why did that crowd come? Why did they gather around this rabbi, teacher, and miracle worker? As we read last week this cha- in this chapter, Jesus fed more than 5,000 people with 12 baskets filled left over. And then he speaks very directly to the people. Jesus reads right into their motives in verse 26. Very truly, I tell you, you are coming for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. They wanted full stomachs instead of fulfilled lives. So they missed out on what Jesus provides in times of hunger and thirst. Not what he provides, but what he provides. They ate the food but missed the meal and the message that he was sharing with them. A message that still says, whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. They missed the message. That little does become much when given to the Father. A life offered to Christ can feed a gospel to the world. A life offered to Jesus can help us resist the hunger pains of materialism or the stomach growls of our own self-indulgence. Jesus offers the alternative to food that fasts. He offers the food that lasts. Jesus tells them and us in verse 27, don't work for food that perishes, but search instead for the food that endures for eternal life, which is the Son of Man will give you. In other words, the things of this world have a shelf life an expiration date. But the fruits of the word have eternal life. This food lasts during the storms of life. This food sustains us from generation to generation. And I believe there's no expiration date on God's promises to us. We believe in a God that calls us by name, calls us by name in our baptisms to work for justice in this world, which includes both feeding literally and spiritually those who hunger in our world. I believe this text tells us that God provides through Jesus not what we want, but actually what we all need. King David wrote in Psalm 139, O Lord, you have searched me and known me, You know when I sit down, when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. For it is you who form my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's, mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. So how's that for being seen? How is that for being known? Who else could handle knowing that much about us and still love us but the one who created us? A 
and knit us together in our mother's womb. Well, we spent one day on our trip <coughs> in Montgomery, Alabama, at the Legacy Museum, which is part of the Equal Justice Initiative. It is a modern, immersive experience that begins with a room that over overwhelms the senses and sharing the stories of the trafficked slaves on ships from Africa to the Americas. It moves through the civil rights movement of the last century to our current racial tensions in our world. One of the more recent and prophetic voices of the movement has been Brian Stevenson, who is the direct executive director of the Equal Justice Initiative. He has spent his life working for justice on behalf of the poor and the prisoner. One of his quotes, which you can see on Pastor Sarah's t-shirt, um, and you'll see on t-shirts and mugs and billboards, and that quote of Brian Stevenson is, I believe that each person is more than the worst thing they've ever done. Sometimes our past mistakes and failures can cause us to doubt the truth of Jesus' gift of love and forgiveness in the cross and the empty tomb. We minimize the liberation of the forgiveness of sin that Jesus promises us. We question whether the new life we are given in Christ is really for us. It's difficult for us to accept that there is nothing we have to do to earn or be worthy of this kind of extravagant love and forgiveness. That is the nature of our God, the God that we worship a generous and forgiving God. <coughs> Secondly, this text also tells us that God promises can sustain us through all things. And again, King David comes to us in Psalm 34 and says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. The people the people tell Jesus in verse 31, our ancestors ate the man in the wilderness as it is written. And then Jesus responds to them, very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of heaven is that which comes down and gives life to the world. And they said, Sir, give us this bread always. So not only does this text tell us that God provides through Jesus, not what we want, but what we need, and that God promises can sustain us through all times. Finally, the text tells us God's presence through Jesus allows us room to grow in grace. So looking out around the dome as we worship together in New Orleans on that last day made me realize how much we all need this time of worship. God provides us with time together to worship and be served the communion meal. And as people of faith, we need, I need, this time to sing to pray, to hear the scriptures read, and to hear the gospel ring, the gospel of God's love and forgiveness, so that we can go out and serve others as we have been served, sharing that love and grace with all those we meet.
continue now with our prayers at the end of each petition you'll hear lord in your mercy and you're welcome to respond by saying hear our prayer calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds let us pray for the church the world and all in need O oh, wise one your wisdom has been present in this world since its beginning pour out your wisdom into the hearts of the whole church especially baby Joseph and his family as he is baptized this weekend, and for Brooks, Carson, Thea, Zoe, Addie, and Ava as they receive their first communion milestone this weekend. We also pray for our upcoming vacation Bible school, for the children, the youth, the adults, and the LRCC staff who will be leading us in this meaningful week. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Compassionate God. Help government leaders of this world unite for peace and justice. Humble all who hold authority, that power is directed towards a more just society. We pray for an end to war and violence, and thank you for those who work tirelessly for peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bread of life from heaven, you feed us. Fill all who hunger with needed nutrition, and open our hearts to eliminate hunger in this world. We pray for the Third Avenue Charitable Organization, the Cupboard on 54th, Monty's Food Pantry, Father Joe's Villages, Meals on Wheels, and all organizations providing meals for people in need. May we see a day when all are fed. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Wisdom of truth. Help us to understand your will for the world. We pray for teachers and administrator, aides, cafeteria staff, maintenance workers, guidance counselors, school nurses, after school program staff, and all those who work in schools and in the field of education. Bless them as they prepare and begin another school year. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Tender God, we pray for those who live daily with anxiety, depression, eating disorders, and other mental health struggles. We pray for those who are lonely, sick, in the hospital, facing health decisions, or those at the end of life. May your peace be with them always. We offer now the silent prayers of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and also, also with you. We share a sign of peace with the people around us. May God's peace be with you wherever you are. To those online, God's peace be with you.
As we come to a time of offering, the offering plates are going around. Just to remind you all to fill out those blue slips that you're stuffed in your bulletin. Let us know who commute with us, who attended this morning. Write down any prayer updates you'd like for us to pray about, and anything you want the office staff to know about, or the pastors on those blue slips as well. You can put your offering in those offering plates. You can also give online. You can follow the QR code. It's in the bottom of that blue slip. It's also in the offering section of our worship bulletin. So we uh, thank the, our musicians as they uh, lead us in music and share their musical offerings with us this morning. Let us pray. Risen one, you, you call, call us to believe and bear fruit. May the May gifts the that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I think some of our kids just left, but we're calling the kids up for children's time right now, actually. So kids, if you want to come up. I have someone really fun to introduce you to. This is my friend with my favorite name in the whole world. This is my friend Sarah. <laughs> and she's here from camp. She works up at the camps. Have any of you ever been to our camp before, Luther Glen? Or El Camino Pines? You've been to both. You guys are pros, I know. Um, and so she's here because she's helping us. Come on up. She's helping us with VBS this week. Miss Alice is also helping us, by the way, with our preschool and kindergarten age kids. And that group is our biggest group. So we want to thank Miss Alice for that. <laughs> Miss Alice! I feel the same way. Miss Alice! Okay, so, but Sarah is going to do our children's time for us. She has a message for us to help us learn something. And then especially if you're coming to VBS next week, then you get extra, a little extra preparation for that, right? So let me give you my microphone again. I need what? Elena. Emily. Julia. Ava. I know your name, Addie. Abby. Ooh. Who's what? Romeo. Oh, Maddie, and she's your sister. <laughs> I love that. Well, my name is Sarah, as you might have heard. 
And it is so nice to meet you all and be here for this week. Um, so I have a couple questions for you guys because we're going to talk about what we're going to be talking about during VBS this week. Okay, and so I have some questions. So the first question is, have you ever heard the term, don't judge a book by its cover? Yeah. No, yes? What does that mean? No, no idea? No. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Don't judge people how they look, right? What about, um, it, yeah, yeah, so don't judge what it looks like from the outside, right? Um, what about killing two birds with one stone? Have you heard that? No. 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 You have? Yeah. Two bird, one stone. Yeah, it's like getting two things done at once. So, well, now you didn't. Yeah, you go tell everyone about it. You can do it at the same time. You can walk and talk at the same time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Two birds, one stone. Walk and talk. Exactly. Yeah. So what about what about um, walking on water? No. 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 <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Mm, I see, I see. You, like, stand from the outside? You got to run really fast. Okay, run, run, and then you just fall in, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that seems like something impossible, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So our theme for this summer and for this week at VBS is kind of similar to that. It's something that seems impossible. It's called moving mountains. It's a big, it's a big task, right? So what comes to mind when you think of that? Mm -hmm. Erosion? Yeah. Have you ever tried to move a mountain? Do you think you yeah. could? No? In your dreams, maybe, yeah. <laughs> what about, what's like the heaviest thing you guys have picked up? Your sister? <laughs> Cat? <laughs> Your sister, too? <laughs> no. <laughs> Glass container. Yeah, because even if something is not super heavy, if you hold it for a long time, it starts to hurt, right? Yeah, it, it becomes more weight. So, mm -hmm. no, yeah, it's like they want you to keep holding them. <laughs> so, when we talk about moving mountains at VBS, though, we're talking about the mountains in your life. And so what that means basically is there, there are heavy things that you can pick up, right? But then sometimes there's some heavy things that maybe weigh on your heart or on your mind that are hard to move away from there, right? Like has anyone ever, um, have you guys ever moved? Yeah. Moved houses? Yeah. No. no. Started a new, a new school or a new grade? Is that scary? No. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it gets a little bit easier every year, right? Mm -hmm. That's exciting. Yeah, you're going to make a lot of friends. And then it won't be as scary like halfway through the year, right? Oh, that's nice. That'll help you. Wow. Wow. See, and that's a little bit scary, right? Sometimes it's a little bit intimidating, or sometimes if you have to do a hard thing, it's not always easy the first time, right? And sometimes it can, it can give us some trouble and, and weigh on us. And so when, 
uh, we think about that during day camp, we're going to learn how to move those mountains of our life. And so I'm going to read you the Bible verse that's our theme verse for the week, okay? I'm going to read it twice, so really, really listen in. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Again, it's Psalms 121, verses 1 through 2. And it says, I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. So I want to ask you guys, where does your help come from? Karen? Your mind. I love that. Friends, family, your mind, Priorities. and God, options. and what? Solutions. Solutions, yeah. Plopping your face on a pillow, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, read a book. These are great places to get strength from. And so when we talk about moving mountains, we're talking about the strength that God gives us to face these things head on. And like you said, like with our friends and family, and ourselves, we can get through it, right? All right, so I'm going to pray real quick, if you would please join with me. Dear God, thank you for this wonderful week. Thank you for um, sending us all into this room together, wherever we come from and wherever we are going. Thank you for helping us move mountains when they seem impossible to move, and thank you for your guidance through this. Amen. We have two friends at this service who are celebrating a faith milestone, their first communion. So Addie's going to stand up and Ava's going to stand up. And uh, we have some pictures, I think, that we're going to show, too, of when we did first communion class. So I hope you enjoy your grape juice today, everybody, because that's how we made, <laughs> made our grape juice. Do you remember when we did this? Yep. And so do you see the picture up there? Look it. Who's the, who are those people up there stomping on our grapes? <laughs> yeah, do you remember making bread? Are you? Yeah, and then that's where we started making the bread together. And some of our friends got first communion at first service. We made two kinds of bread, regular uh, flatbread, and then we made a gluten-free one too. Remember, we tried them both. Yeah, she's allergic to gluten. That's why I sent, now we learned some gluten-free bread to make. It was really fun. And so we're now going to present you with your pins to celebrate your milestone. So here's your pin. Here is your pin. And then um, when it comes time for communion after the words of institution, we're going to invite the families up who are going to do communion with these two for their first communion. And you'll, have, you'll be in that first circle of communion. So, um, so we're celebrating with our friends today, right? Their first communion. That's something special to celebrate together. So you can turn around here, and we're going to do what we always do with the words of institution, right? And you remember in the night in which Jesus was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broken and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. And then he said, What? Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. And then he said, Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, so we're going to have Addie and Ava stay up. Everybody else can return to your seats. I want to invite Addie and Ava's people forward, who are going to come up with them. While we're getting set up, we want to welcome you all to communion. You do not need to be a member of this church or Lutheran. All are welcome to come forward, eat, drink, and receive. And in just a moment, we'll invite you to complete the circle up here for this first circle. 
will come around and um, serve you a piece of bread and an individual cup of wine or grape juice. We also have gluten-free crackers available, so if you need that, just let us know. And then uh, the wine is the lighter color liquid, the grape juice is the darker color one. After um, you've received those, we'll collect your empty cups. You'll be invited to shake hands with your neighbors. We're going to offer you a blessing. Then following that blessing, you can return to your seats down the side aisle so people can continue to come forward down the center aisle. If you're not communing at this time and prefer to receive a blessing, we just ask that you fold your hands so we know to offer you a blessing. Um, and then it is our practice to serve communion by first name, so if you don't have a name tag on, we may be asking for your name. That's everything you need to know. The table's been prepared, and all are welcome. Bring your body type so I can hear you.
Let us pray. Shepherd and God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Amen. So now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We'll sing our closing hymn. We want to invite you to stick around. We have cream cheese stuffed strawberries again, back by popular demand that Coley made for us, as well as coffee. And then, of course, um, our prayer quill out in the courtyard following our service for that time of fellowship and to celebrate with our First Communion students as well. We sing our closing hymn, I Love to Tell the Story. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ.
God is good.